Yesterday on the show, we talked a lot about Brandon Graham and uh, whether or not he was going to hold out or if he is holding out or is there a possibility of a holdout. Uh, there are some conflicting reports out there. John McMullen, 97.3 ESPN.com, reports out there that he was planning to hold out. Now, Howie Roseman on Pro Football Talk this morning uh, kind of refuted that a little bit, uh, kind of said, look, we don't talk about contracts, but – uh, they seemed, he seemed to sound like they anticipated no problems or at least that they weren't going to discuss the contract with Brandon Graham. So hearing what Roseman said on Pro Football Talk, how are you reading between the lines now? Uh, I, I don't think it's really conflicting, uh, to be honest, if you think about it, uh, because what has happened is very similar, if you go back to last year, what was going on with Darren Sproles, who basically stayed in San Diego. Uh, everyone uh, downplayed the fact that uh, there was a contract issue, and then late July, magically, there was a one-year extension. And uh, I think you're going to see uh, a similar end game here. The bottom line is Brandon's not here. Uh, the work right now is voluntary. Uh, so he's not holding out. Uh, but in the past, he's always been here for voluntary work. Uh, so the fact that he's back in Detroit, uh, spending time with his family, uh, is one way you could spin it. And he doesn't need to be here. And that's the way some people will uh, go down. And there's the other people who are going to look at it and say, they kind of know he he's upset that Vinnie Curry makes more money than him. Uh, and there's a reason he chose this year not to show up when he has shown up every year in the past. Uh, but again, it's not a holdout until many can. Uh, and if he doesn't show up for many can, that's when you know you have the real issue. Uh, and we got time to work things out before that would be the case. Now, Roseman said that uh, Graham has attended most of the Eagles' voluntary offseason workouts and that he's been working pretty hard. He said, quote, I would say every day Brandon's been in here, and the only days he hasn't been in here are the last couple. He's had a tremendous attitude, tremendous work ethic, and all our conversations with him have been tremendously positive. So he is painting the picture kind of that this, uh, his words, not mine, this is media on media crime. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> um and, and again, it's, you know, Brandon was here for uh, the first day of OTAs and, and the workout portion of it. Uh, and he actually spoke to us and he was he was in a very good mood. He was his typical ebullient self, um, but he did leave early. He's not scheduled to come back as of now uh, when OTAs pick up again for the veteran players. Uh, and we'll see how that shakes out. So. You know, when you want to paint it one way, again, you can. And you want to paint it the other way, you can. The bottom line is he's a veteran player. It's voluntary. He doesn't have to be here. Uh, so he's not holding out. So it's easy to take it that way. And he's also a guy who's going to keep himself in shape. And to be blatantly honest, similar with, as I said, with Darren Sproles last year, veteran players like that don't need OTAs. There's no work in pads. There's no especially with a defensive lineman. He's not going to gain anything uh, from the on-field work. He already knows the system. Uh, so it's easy to, to spin it as not much, and it isn't much until uh, and if, as I said, he doesn't show up uh, for minicamp, and we'll see uh, how that works. But I would not be surprised, and you know, mark this tape right now, uh, the Eagles, like they did with Darren Sproles, Something is going to be adjusted in Brandon Graham's contract before training camp. John McMullen with us talking Eagles football. And, John, so adjustment in his contract. Yes, we just marked that tape for you. Don't worry. We've got that. we got the in point and the out point. Would you say, then, that Brandon Graham is or has become one of the leaders of the team? Uh, yes. Yes, I would say he has. Uh, and, and you can tell, by the way, uh, you know, the, the Eagles only make certain players available uh, when, during the offseason when work is set to begin, and the names were familiar. And it was Brandon Graham, and it was Malcolm Jenkins, and obviously Carson Wentz, the quarterback. Uh, those are the type of guys uh, that are made available, and that tells you a lot 
That's because they are not only good players, uh, but they're leaders on this football team. Jordan Hicks in that category, too, or getting there? Yes, Jordan was uh, was a made available also, so he's already in that category. Uh, and he's, you know, basically the quarterback is, of this defense as the middle linebacker. Yeah, one thing with Brandon Graham, you know, the Eagles are in a tough – they have a tough decision with him here, right? If he does hold out, what do you do? He's 29 years old. He's obviously your best. Um, I, I look at Jordan Hicks as the face of the defense, but Graham may be, you know, he's the best defensive lineman they have. Um, how he's probably hoping that this is just uh, Graham uh, some speculation, right? I mean, obviously he doesn't want his guy to hold out, but they would have a really tough decision to, if they, you know, to dig their heels in the sand on this on this situation here. No, and I, I don't think he is going to hold out. I mentioned that yesterday on the show. He doesn't have a ton of leverage. As players in this league, the way the system is set up, he's got two years left on his deal. He doesn't have uh, a tremendous amount of leverage. And he's not going to walk away from the game. He's not going to retire. He's going to make $6.5 million. Uh, so this is business as usual in the NFL. This is really the only recourse a veteran player has to say, look, just make things more fair. And the fact that I'm the best defensive end on this team, I should be getting the most money. And I think Howie realizes that. And I think ultimately that's where I said there is going to be a tweak in this contract. It might be more money up front. It might be a one-year extension uh, like Darren Sproles got. But there's going to be a tweak in, in this contract. I feel very, very comfortable in saying that. Now, Roseman said there are no signs that uh, or no indication that Graham is unhappy with this deal, but as we kind of chronicled yesterday, doesn't he have a legitimate beef? Well, yeah, he does. And also notice how he went very Clintonian with parsing his language. He said he's had no discussions. He's had no uh, sort of input from Brandon Graham that would indicate he was unhappy. He was then asked the follow-up. How about his agent? And that he would not answer the question <laughs> because obviously the agent is the guy who's going to negotiate and try to get Brandon more money. So he, he kind of he walked the tightrope, and that's that's what you do in these types of situations. Uh, Brandon Grant's not going to go knock on his door and say, I want more money. It's his agent who's going to do it. Uh, John McMullen, 97.3 ESPN.com, at J.F. McMullen on Twitter, and, of course, uh, covers the league nationally for FanRag Sports NFL. Uh, we'll get into the NFL news and notes here presented by uh, BMW of Atlantic City. Um, the Eagles, right after we got done with you yesterday, John, the Eagles waived wide receiver Rasheed Bailey, who they signed to a futures contract back in January. Now, this guy uh, has been interesting because Chip brought him in, got rid of him. He bounced all over the place. They bring him back. There was some legitimate thought at the time that this guy could play and uh, make the team and be a part of the team. But then Alshon Jeffrey, Torrey Smith, Mac Hollins, Shelton Gibson, and uh, they didn't even give him a chance to try out here. Uh, so, number one, what does that say about their thoughts on the wide receiver spot? Because you still have DGB, Nelson Aguilar, Bryce Treggs, and Paul Turner. i got to throw Paul Turner in there, right, <laughs> PT? Uh, they're all still in the mix here, so they just did – did they do Bailey a favor? Were you surprised uh, that there was no spot for Bailey? No, no surprise at all for the latter. And and for a lot of uh, good reasons, I'm, I'm, there's certain Eagles fans that probably couldn't have taken – Paul Turner and Rasheed Bailey on the same field at the same time. So it's probably good that they're not putting them through that. Uh, yeah, I mean, the writing was on the wall for a guy like that. He's deep on the roster. And when you bring in so many receivers, there's just no spot for him, barring not only injuries, multiple injuries. Uh, so they did do him a favor. He doesn't really have a chance to make this football team. And, uh, they needed an extra spot for the undrafted free agents they're bringing in. So it, it's always that sort of wrangling. And a lot of those reserve guys you sign in January never make it to OTAs because then the draft comes and the Eagles went heavy at the wide receiver position. So there was no more need for them. 
Yeah, Bailey, uh, it was a guy out of Delaware Valley State, by the way, uh, 2015 Division Three. Uh, Chip Kelly, right? Chip Kelly was the original guy who <laughs> nice found him. Nice local story. Right? Yes, and he was uh, uh, a fan favorite uh, from his preseason, preseason work, very much like Paul Turner was last year. But he's a limited guy, and obviously when you bring in big-time players like Alshon Jeffrey and you have two draft choices and, and Torrey Smith, I mean – as I said, the writing was on the wall. John, I know the rookies, uh, that starts tomorrow, right? Uh, May 12th is already here. Maybe give us a little preview of what the guys will be doing this week. Well, it's rookie mini camp, so it's just uh, the rookies and the undrafted free agents and, and a few uh, veterans who don't have a lot of service time are coming back from injuries, and they'll be doing on-field work, so... Uh, none of the veteran guys like Malcolm and Jordan and Brandon Graham, as we just mentioned, is not here. So uh, it's just the first step sort of ramping up and getting them used to the uh, the system. And, and uh, it's always exciting to see uh, the young players on the practice field for the first time. You see them in their uniform. You see them in their jersey, their new numbers. And uh, it brings a little bit of excitement and realize September's not that far off. No, it's not. And, uh, you know, these rookies get their first taste of the NFL. Do the Eagles, to your knowledge, have any of those West Coasters uh, trimester guys that won't be there because they're still, you know, last year, um, say Amala, that seems to mess some of these guys and up sometimes. And Ertz when it was Ertz's yeah. year. Yeah, uh, generally the Pac-12, uh, I think every school is on that quarter system. So, Basically, the guys come in for mini camp, and then you don't see them again till training camp. So that hurts yep. those Pac-12 guys. And Elijah Qualls will be one. Sidney Jones obviously oh. is injured, but uh, he's not going to be able to be here for a while. Yeah, uh, and that's just one of the things you add into it. The Pac-12 and uh, the system they have is not necessarily the best for rookies in the NFL. How about? Uh... Uh, Howie Roseman going all uh, Sixers today, saying that they learned a lot from the Sixers and uh, how to handle injured guys who, who might not play. The Sixers probably are <laughs> thrilled by that because their their medical personnel gets destroyed on a, on a daily basis. And it's not, by the way, it's not the Sixers doctor's fault. Uh, it's probably uh, more of a communication issue. But I, I think what Howie meant was that they learned to be cautious and there's no use pushing somebody back uh and because look Sidney Jones could probably get on the field uh this year not probably definitely from the standpoint of his injury is going to be healed uh but you have to see where he is and if he's not ready to play uh, you have to give him proper time to rehab and get back up and, and feel comfortable uh, and that necessarily isn't immediate from your automatically cleared and say you can go play NFL football. And I think that's what they mean. And they're going to be very, very cautious with them. Uh, quick NFL news and notes with John here. Uh, the NFL denied Gordon's uh, restatement bid here. Um, you know, Josh Gordon, by the way, from Cleveland. So uh, what's We knew uh, you didn't mean Lightfoot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Josh Gordon's application denied. So uh, what's his future looking like? <laughs> it's not good. He, <laughs> he can uh, apply again in the fall, uh, which would be the start. But this is a guy who was conditionally reinstated uh, and then went back into rehab. So uh, clearly he's a young man who has a lot of issues. And he's a, 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 unfortunately a long list. A, a couple of guys, Darrell Washington, uh, who if people remember because it's been three years since he's been on the field. He was an all-pro linebacker. He was one of the best two or three three-down linebackers in football when he got suspended. Hasn't been back for three years. The Cardinals just released him today. He's been conditionally reinstated. You have the Justin Blackmans of the world. Uh, people forget about him. It's It's – Randy Gregory, who, depending on who you believe and who you don't, has failed a yet another drug test. It's it's sad, and and it's it's a shame that 
a, a talented player like Josh Gordon can't get on the field. Yeah, I know he was a guy that uh, a lot of people uh, thought could be traded, right? I mean, that the Browns might uh, not have interest in bringing him back, but it would have been an interesting name to keep an eye on via trade. Well, you have to be <laughs> the biggest risk taker in the world <laughs> to, to trade for him. I mean, it's got nothing to do, obviously, with talent. I know people say uh, before the Eagles made all the wide receiver moves, for instance, what what a what a great pickup that would be from a talent standpoint. But why would you trade for a guy you can't count on? I mean, there's no guarantee he's ever going to get on the field. So, uh, despite his prodigious talent, there's just no trade value to him because. He's he's one failed drug test away from being on the shelf again. Yeah, uh, John McBall is with us, 97.3 ESPN.com. Uh, tomorrow is the Eagles rookie camp open for business. Get a chance to see uh, who are some of the guys you're intrigued by in, in this camp. By the way, you've talked Pac-10 uh, or Pac-12 or whatever, however many teams play out in that <laughs> conference. Uh, is uh, San Diego State's not in the conference, but uh, San Diego State affected by this? Are we going to miss out on Pumphrey? No, I don't think they're on the quarter system, so I think you're fine there. Uh, but Pumphrey, yeah, Pumphrey will be there. They, the entry, you tend to look at the skill position players at yeah. OTAs only for – you really, I, I mean, you'd love to take a look at Derek Barnett, but, I, I mean, until they put on the pads with offensive and defensive linemen, there's not much you can learn. There really isn't. Uh, so you tend to focus on – uh, on guys like Pumphrey and, and Hollins and Gibson and players like that who are skill position, you can see their athleticism. But uh, and we always talk about with the new CBA, it's it's tough to get these guys ramped up and ready to play because you can't do much at these mini camps and OTAs. John McMullen with us. Yeah, John, I saw Pumphrey tweet out a picture of It's Been Real San Diego, and he had his little backpack there with the uh, lo his college logo on it, but then you could see a little corner of his ticket, and you know me and how I think, Johnny Mac. I, I take a look at that ticket and see that it's San Diego to Chicago, Chicago to Philadelphia. Come on, dude. You just signed it. You, you got NFL money. <laughs> Can't you get a direct flight? Yeah, I got it. <laughs> get the direct flight. Yeah, I, I saw that same thing, and I saw that same thing. I'm like, why do you want to? Uh, why do you want to see the layover? But uh, hey, uh, some guys are are sensible, and and maybe there wasn't a direct flight. You never know. So hey, uh, you get there on time, John. The uh, last thing you want to do is be late. That's right. Your first day, I'm late. Hey, why are you late? Well, I had a layover on my four stops to get here. Uh, John's piece at Fanrag Sports NFL, admitting the NFL admitting they, uh, you know, that Dean Blandino was a big deal for them. Uh, how important was he to the NFL? Well, they hired three people to replace him. So I think, you know, in essence, they split up his job and gave it to three different people. So I, I think that tells you how much, not only how much he did for the league, uh, but also how important he was to the league and, and what a big loss he is. And it, it just, again, indicates uh, the NFL was caught completely by surprise. Uh, with him leaving, and it's 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 not going to be uh, it's going to be a bumpy ride trying to replace him. And I know people in Philadelphia, especially, don't believe that, but uh, he's very very well respected around the league. All right, John's got more at JF McMullen on the Eagles, the NFL, and of course ninety seven three ESPN dot com. And uh, we'll talk to John tomorrow as the Eagles will be out on the field, like they're getting ready for a football game. Let's see it. I can't wait. Get fitted for the helmets, you know, the whole nine yards. Here's where the bathroom is. The whole this nine is, yards. This is your now Pumphrey, number 34. <laughs> oh. Number 34 in your guide, number one in your heart, right? All right, uh, John, we'll talk to you tomorrow, pal. All right, thanks, guys.